If you're looking for a Microsoft 365 backup solution, Synology might just have the trick. Synology have a range of NAS devices to meet your storage and your budget requirements. Backing up Office 365 data to your NAS is easy. Simply download the Synology app from their package store. It's a free application and there's no ongoing charges for it. Once you've downloaded it, you'll need to set up some authentication profiles and a backup profile. Once you've got that going, you can select what you want to back up. You can support email, OneDrive, and SharePoint data in that backup. This video won't take you through the setup procedure, but you can find that on my blog here. Instead, this video will focus on how you interact with your data once you've got it backing up, um, and how you can restore it, and how you can actually export it as well. For the review, I'll be using a Synology DS920 Plus, but you could use a number of other uh, Synology NAS devices. For those that might be interested, the 920 Plus runs cool and quietly, um, and I think it's a great device for your home or your small office when you don't have a ton of data. Um, it's got four drive bays, you know, so you can get um, a fair bit of data in there, but um, for any larger businesses, obviously, um, it's probably not going to be enough. It's also worthwhile pointing out that the software running on these NAS devices is very similar across all of the device range, um, and therefore what you're seeing here in this video will apply to probably most other devices that you use from the Synology range. This is the desktop that you'll be presented uh, when you log in. If you haven't got your NAS already set up, I have a kind of a quick start guide that will take you through getting the NAS online and getting the application required uh, installed on the NAS to do the Office 365 backup. You can find that guide here. Once you're all set up, you'll see in the main menu there are a couple of applications that get installed. Active Backup for Microsoft 365 uh, and the Active Backup Portal. Um, so first one is the configuration element. So this is where you set up your backup jobs, which my blog post will take you through. Um, and here you can see a bit of a summary on what's been backed up um, and how much data you've got and any potential issues. You'll see I've got a bunch of exclamation marks here, which are, are mostly uh, created by guest users that I have in my tenancy. Um, so not to worry about those. You'll see uh, how much you've got in your drive, your mail, um, SharePoint sites, uh, and contacts and cal calendar which are really related to mail. You can look at existing tasks that you may have created. Um, these are backup tasks of course um, and you can edit those so you can simply select that. Um, and this is effectively what I take you through in my blog um, to get debt set up really. So you can see an existing job here um, and, th and that will run basically um, actively really so changes will apply um, within a few minutes really. Uh, you can see the um, uh, user accounts I have selected um, and what I'm backing up here. Um, and I've basically just select, selected to back everything up. Back up your groups, um, all of your sites, and then there's this auto discovery service. And I've, again, I've turned all of this on. This effectively just means that um, any site or user or group that gets added post this configuration, it will automatically be added to the backup. You could deselect that uh, and manage this on a, a manual basis if you wanted to, um, but I think typically you're going to want to, you know, automatically um, add those to the backup job and not have to, to worry about it and make sure your data is all safe and sound. Um, continuous backup, that's what I was talking about just before. So every, every few minutes um, the backup job will run and keep my data pretty well up to date. Um, I could make the backup job manual or I could schedule it say you know every 24 hours or something like that. Um, I can either preserve all versions uh, and I can decide sort of how long do I want to keep that data. So that's an overview of the uh, setup options that you have. The activities tab shows you things that are happening right now so um, you can actually see here at the moment um, stuff is getting backed up, data is being processed. Um, and that will continue to happen every few minutes or any time data is changing, it'll, it'll, it will go and check that and make sure that's um, uh, backed up because I'm in continuous backup mode. Of course, no IT product would be the same without a log. Um, and again, a lot of these warnings, if I dig into these, these are related to um, guest users that I have in my tenancy. So we won't worry too much about that. So going to the other application is the portal. So this is where you will actually manage your um, restore and export operations. Um, so first thing you're going to want to do is click this little icon up the top here 
and actually decide what service are we wanting to interact with right now. Okay, so um, first let's take a look at the OneDrive data. So when I select OneDrive, um, I will then need to select a user. So, you know, say I am looking for my test user here. Um, lots of Andrews in this pretend tenant. Um, demo Andrew, as an example. Um, I can select that user, click OK. Um, and now I'm presented all of the backup data that is related to that user. Now, this is not a very active user because it's a demo user, uh, but I have a couple of documents that I've shared in a Microsoft Teams chat and those are there and available for me to either restore or to export. So um, both good options. So you might want to restore data directly to the Office 365 tenant, you can do that. Uh, or maybe the Office 365 tenant is having a major outage and you need urgent access to a document, you can actually export that to your desktop. So I'll show you both. Um, so let's tick that one. Um, if I do the restore uh, option, ba basically it gets stored to, a, to the same location but in a, a, a folder by this name, so restore underscore date time basically. Uh, and probably I want to restore the file sharing permission as well. So let's, let's do a restore. Alright, so that's successful. Let's go and have a look at what that actually looks like. Okay, so I've opened OneDrive in my browser. Uh, and as you can see, I now have this restore folder. And if I go in there, you will see that that document has actually been restored. Okay, so jumping back to the backup, let's actually just do an export now and export that to our desktop. So same thing, but now I click the export button. Um, and you can see here, it is, is just downloading that document directly to my des desktop. Along the bottom here, you can uh, determine the sort of the backup point um, and you can search for different dates and times. Uh, and this applies across all the different types of um, backups. So um, this one here will take you to now where we are. Um, you could plug in a date if you wanted. This one here will refresh and this will take you back or forwards a day. So I can go back a day, forward a day. Uh, simple as that. Um, so that's how you can sort of navigate through uh, different different backups and how far back you may want to go when you restore that file. Next, let's take a look at uh, mail. So mail again is in the user context. I've already selected demo Andrew, so switching uh, will switch to demo Andrew's email. Um, and you can see here that um, I have a view of the inbox um, or the mailbox. Um, there's some emails in there. Um, and basically, same thing, I can select an individual message or multiple messages that I might want to restore. Um, and I can jump up here. Um, and here in this case, I can say I just want to restore the messages I've selected, or maybe all mail in the uh, inbox, or I could actually restore the entire mailbox. Um, so I've actually done that already, and you can see down here I've got a restore, but I'll just show you the, um, the process here. So. Um, I can restore it to a new folder, which is what I did over here. Um, I can restore it to the original folder, so that's going to overwrite any existing mail, so be careful on that one. Um, or the original folder and skip anything that is the same. Um, so quite a few options there to, to work. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to cancel out of this, but we can jump in here and I can see a restore. I've done a full mailbox restore in this case to a new folder, not overwriting anything. But you can see here I have an exact copy restored to my mailbox. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can just download messages, um, ex export I should say, um, and it's going to download them as an EML file so Outlook will recognize that. So I could download and save that message to my desktop and yeah, open it up directly in Outlook. Okay, next, let's go to contacts. Just have a quick look there. So this is really a, an exchange function. So, um, you know, so contacts that you have in, in your Outlook or your exchange. Again, same sort of process. Um, it restores in this case only to a separate folder in your contacts. Go ahead and just do that. Uh, run that job. Next, let's just quickly take a look at calendar. All right, so here's my calendar. There's a few meetings in there. Again, I can restore. Um, it will restore to a, a new location, basically. Let's go and do that. All right. Um, and in both of these options you have, have the export as well, which is just going to save the ICS file or the, the, the contact file uh, in the case of contacts. Um, so now let's just go and have a look at what that looks like once restored. So opening into Outlook, uh, let's look at all three things related to Outlook. Okay, so here's my restored complete mailbox. You'll see that it is basically the same as my actual mailbox. There is the restored version of that. Jumping into uh, Calendar. You'll see here I have a new 
oops, calendar, um, which is basically a restored version of my original calendar. Then in the case of contacts, let's jump across to there. Uh, and once again, we will see this restore folder here and it has my Oli Outlook contact, which I restored. Um, so hopefully in the future, we'll be able to restore like you can with email, restore over the top and have those additional options for contacts and for calendar as well, rather than creating that folder. Um, but, but pretty good otherwise, right? Um, nice and easy and restores in place directly to the user's uh, mailbox. Last but not least, we'll take a look at SharePoint. So SharePoint's obviously not a user-based backup, so we'll need to choose the SharePoint site that we're interested in. So I'll jump up here and I'll pick on my user group. Okay, so organizers, select that. Uh, this shows you all the site structure. Um, so if we go and look for an individual document, uh, there won't be much in here, but there's our schedule for um, user groups. And if I go restore, again, I can choose uh, to restore the file sharing permissions. It will get restored into a subfolder. Okay, so there's no option yet to, to restore it in place, basically. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, we could also export that file. Again, you can see there, um, it's it's going to export that file directly um, to my desktop. Um, I could jump back to the to the root of that site as well, and I could actually select everything. Um, so let's do a restore in that case. Uh, restore all file sharing permissions and go OK on that one. All right, that's done. Again, exporting is also an option, um, and I can multi-select, but if I select this taxonomy list, it doesn't like it, so I can't export that, but I can export any number of other folders there. Uh, click export, it's gonna package that up, and again, download that to my desktop. Okay, so let's go and actually take a look at that in the SharePoint site. So here's the SharePoint site I've just restored to. The restore is actually creating a, a new document library. Um, so you won't actually find the restore under the documents itself, uh, under a subfolder. Um, which is possibly a little annoying, um, but the but the documents are actually restored to a, their own new library. Um, so you know, hopefully in the future, maybe there'll be some additional options on how you actually restore. Um, but at least your da data is is safe and sound at this point, right? Um, and you can move things around as you choose uh, once you've restored them. So you can see there, I've done two restores, um, and both have created their own document libraries. So, you know, potentially a little bit messy, um, but better than losing your data. You'll also see under site contents, uh, all of those other things that I restored. Again, you will see that um, taxonomy, for example, that list that's been restore, um, restored with, uh, as a file called restore underscore uh, taxonomy hidden list. Um, and all of these other libraries you'll see here as well, the style library, again, restore, uh, rename here um, so yeah so that's the SharePoint restore as always thanks for watching I really appreciate it if you find my videos useful please feel free to subscribe down below